Yo, what's going on guys? It is Foxy Dude 98 here, and welcome back to a brand new video for you guys today on my channel. Today we are back with another video for you guys, and this is going to be uh, part 4 of my F1 2016 Career Mode Season 3 with Red Bull Racing. Now, if you do enjoy today's video, drop a like on it, that'd be absolutely awesome. Subscribe if you have not subscribed to my channel already. And as you can see, we've got an R&D event for today, and that is going to be some more downforce for the Red Bull as we look to go towards these downforce heavy circuits, we definitely want to be able to increase the downforce on the car. Even though, quite frankly, the downforce on the Rebel anyway is absolutely amazing. Looking at the R vehicle performance comparison, you can see that we've actually overtaken Mercedes now as the fastest car on the grid. But remember, Mercedes are yet to make any official upgrades to their car yet. So probably for the next race in the Spanish Grand Prix, we'll see a lot of teams making some upgrades uh, for the start of the European season. But in the driver's standings, we are absolutely killing it right now. Maximum points for us. And uh, in the constructor standings, we are still there with three wins in a row so far this season. But the big topic of discussion for today's video is going to be AI difficulty. Now, for this race, I'm actually going to be racing on Ultimate AI. I'm going to finally give it another chance. I hate racing on it, but for some reason I feel so comfortable in this Red Bull that I'm going to give it another shot. So for today's race, we're going to be going on Ultimate AI. And uh, before people then start accusing me of being like, nope, you're not racing on Ultimate, blah, blah, blah. I do show it at the very end, proving that I do go on to Ultimate AI. So yeah, we're now going to be racing on the hardest difficulty in the game. So there can be no complaints that if I win a race, it's on the hardest difficulty. No one can complain about it. End of story. I just want to get rid of complaints, basically. And I'm going to race on Ultimate AI. Screw it. Why the hell not? Let's just do it. Uh, I don't like it, but we're going to try it anyway. So anyway, into the practice sessions we go here. We got the fastest time uh, in the um, track acclimatization. So we got perfect around the whole circuit. Uh, we, uh, we did very well in the track acclimatization test. Uh, got four, no, three purples and then one green lap. And on the qualifying simulation run, uh, we got maximum, uh, we got the best lap possible getting us a purple, uh, meaning maximum resource points for uh, that section. So that's going to be it then. And we got a brand new rival. As you guys know, we managed to beat Daniel Ricciardo in the rivalry. Next up, Emma's going to be giving us a brand new challenger. And the challenger in question is Lewis Hamilton, our Mercedes rival of Lewis Hamilton. We're going to be having a strong battle with Lewis Hamilton, of course. If you think back to the Chinese Grand Prix, if you haven't watched that one, highly recommend you go watch it before coming to watch this one. Uh, we did have a good battle with Lewis Hamilton there, so hopefully we can try and replicate something like that for the Russian Grand Prix. Uh, moving into qualifying then, you can see we are into Q1 here, running a little bit wide into the second to last corner. Carlos Sainz in front of me, a little bit of a distraction there, but not too much of a problem. And we come through there and set the fastest lap and get ourselves comfortably through to Q2. Qualifying third uh, behind Nico Rosberg and Daniel Ricciardo, uh, in the, uh, my teammate in the Red Bull, with the usual likes of uh, drivers uh, losing out here. Moving on into Q2, then we've got Jolian Palmer in front of us this time. Once again, running a little bit wide into uh, the second to last corner, but not as wide as the first um, as the first uh, qualifying session. And we come through here, and we still set the fastest lap of qualifying, so no problems there. And uh, Danny Ricciardo gets the fastest lap there uh, with uh, Lewis Hamilton, and then myself in third once again for Q2. So pretty unfortunate there that we can't quite get it. But into Q3 we go around the second to last corner here. And now around the final corner we go. You can actually see that we actually stuck our car on pole position. I was three tenths down in the middle sector, but I pulled it all back in the final sector. And by a couple of hundredths of a second, it's a Red Bull front row. But we have got pole position for this Russian Grand Prix. A brilliant qualifying session there. Really close between myself and Daniel. I thought I was going to get about third or fourth uh, when I was three tenths down in the middle sector. But I just nailed the final sector, and uh, that's perfect for us. We're going to be starting from pole position. Looking at the session objectives then from Emma. She's going to show us to them now. There they are on your screens. I'd literally gone straight here. But that's it, guys. Let's get into the race for the Russian Grand Prix. Good afternoon from Sochi as we prepare to get underway for the Russian Grand Prix. The championship battle has some time to go yet, but still expect no quarter to be given here on this circuit that made its debut in 2014 and has already seen some classic racing. Built on the shores of the Black Sea, the Sochi Autodrome is a 3.6 mile tour around some of the venues built for the 2014 Winter Olympic Games. Close barriers may make overtakes more challenging, but with 56% of the lap taken absolutely flat out, we certainly won't be wanting for pure speed. A fitting arena then to do battle at the pinnacle of motorsport. 
and alongside me to take you through it all is none other than Anthony Davidson. This was a circuit that I think in its inaugural race got off to a bit of a shaky start, but since then it's really drawn the fans in and become a very popular event. What do you think changed? Well, this just goes to show the importance of fixing problems as and when you discover them. As a complete unknown quantity in 2014, the tyre choice was quite conservative, which didn't really allow much in terms of different strategy options. So it was pretty much as you were from lights to flag. But that was a great learning experience, and we came back the next year and had a really exciting Grand Prix, with battles for the podium going on all the way to the final lap. So hopefully we'll be treated to more of the same this year. You've done well to put it on pole, but we've still got work to do. Trying to cover the inside line off the start. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. It's Red Bull in pole position then, with Daniel Ricciardo slotting in alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Rosberg, Sebastian Vettel, and Raikkonen, Massa, Bottas, Perez, and Kevin Magnussen, Alonso, Button, Nico Hülkenberg, and Kvyat, Sainz, Palmer, Esteban Gutierrez, and Roman Grosjean. Ericsson and NASA, Rio Harianto and Pascal Wehrlein completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right then, guys, so as you can see, we are here for the Russian Grand Prix and uh, onto the grid. We're going to be starting on the super soft tyres and going then to the soft tyres for the end of the race. Uh, this circuit is very, very kind on the tyres, so we shouldn't be expecting any wear on the tyres. But this is going to be a good test, this one, against Ultimate AI. So here we go. Uh, we're onto the formation lap then and uh, making sure that we warm up these tyres and these brakes as much as we possibly can in order for a good and clean start. But as you can see, we are on the grid now. We have got four, now five red lights here for the Russian Grand Prix, and it is lights out, and away we go here in Russia. Let's do this thing. All right, as you can see, we've got a decent start here. Daniel Ricciardo has actually got a very nice start himself. I then cover the inside line into turn two. As you can see Ricciardo coming through. Nico Rosberg getting into the slipstream. Yellow flags behind us. Pascal Verline is already out of this race, and straight away we run a little bit wide out, breaking ourselves just a tiny bit there, and Daniel Ricciardo is still right with us. The two Mercedes drivers a little bit further the back here but as you can see we're coming now through this long long turn three and breaking down into turn four we go Daniel Ricciardo still right behind us here as we look to try and extend or we'll try and get away from our teammate here breaking hard now into turn five here and uh, Daniel Ricciardo is still right there with us as uh, we've had a very nice and very clean start up front very well defended it's an extremely long run down to turn one and we defended the position very very nicely indeed and we can move on uh, move on and try and see if we can do anything in this Grand Prix or we will be holding up a train hopefully we don't hold up a train uh, but as you can see now breaking towards the end of the middle sector you can actually see that the proximity arrow between myself and Ricardo is actually sort of fading a little bit meaning we've got some pace but coming down this long back straight here Ricardo sits in the slipstream of my Red Bull car in itself and he's going to be getting a very nice toe down into the difficult hairpin corner here. Ricardo is not close enough to make a move on us, but he's definitely got to run at us and could potentially get, in a, get, a, get the job done on us going into the uh, second lap here. Coming around the final sector now through this very slow, quite tight and, tight and twisty section here. Uh, Daniel Ricardo still losing out actually, but funnily enough, Ricardo's coming into the pits already at the end of the first lap. Daniel Ricardo is making a pit stop. And he's going to go on to what I believe to be maybe the soft tyres or the medium compound tyres. A very strange strategy from my teammate. But at the end of the first lap, it's all going our way at the moment. But I wonder what Daniel Ricciardo's up to. I think that's the suspicious thing right now. What is he doing? But anyway, let's have a look at the replay of the start then. So as you can see, we got a very nice getaway itself. Very clean, very calm. And uh, eventually then went in to cover the inside line. Daniel Ricciardo got a nice slipstream here, but then Rosberg got the double toe, and then I saw Nico Rosberg was uh, closing in on me, so I moved over to cover off Nico Rosberg. Down into turn one we go. We outbreaked ourselves a little bit and ran wide, but luckily we didn't lose the position, and also I backed off a tiny bit uh, to uh, allow the drivers to close back up onto me. Uh, because I gained a small advantage from going off the corner, unlike Lewis Hamilton in Mexico in real life, who literally just uh, de designed a whole brand new circuit. Uh, but as you can see now, we're getting close uh, into these uh, difficult sections. You can see how close Daniel Ricciardo actually is to our car. Uh, very, very close. Literally about half a second, I think, at this point. Um, and I was really, really confused, actually, on why Daniel Ricciardo has pitted so early on in the first lap. He's obviously trying something different. Uh, he's obviously thought that he was going to get in front of me perhaps at the start of the race and maybe he feels that he's quicker than me 
Uh, so he wants to do a massive undercut. I mean, if you pit it on lap one, especially here in Russia, the track is does not. The track is very, very kind on its tires. It's almost too kind. So you can get these soft tires all the way to the end of the race from pitting on lap one. So it's not a weird strategy from Ricardo, but it's just one I was not expecting. Um, so as you can see, we're coming now around the final sector here. And uh, we're going to be breaking now through to this uh, difficult, tight and twisty section here. Myself leading this race, Ricardo, Hamilton, Rosberg, Vettel, Raik no, Raikkonen, Vettel, Bottas, and Massa. And there goes Ricardo into the pits, weirdly. Um, and then through the second to last corner here, running a little bit wide on the curbing. And then down into the final corner, here we go. And we take the lead of the race. And we're actually going to go a little bit further back. And we're going to go back to the start again. Because remember, Pascal Verlein retired from the race. And let's go and have a look what happened. He's been stuck to the Sauber. And has gone careering into the wall there. Crazy scene. So Pascal's got a decent start against the Sauber here. Oh, I believe it's Felipe Nasser. And they both glued into each other, look. And then all of a sudden, Pascal's front, front wheel has come off there. So a bit of a funny glitch there uh, from the game, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but we're moving on then to lap three of this Grand Prix and we're comfortably holding off Lewis Hamilton by about a second here uh, at this moment in time. And uh, we're looking to try and just do everything we can. We're doing everything we can about basically out front. Um, and Valtteri Bottas is out of this Grand Prix and he's always, he's always out. What is it with Valtteri and then I exceeded track limits? Nice corner cut. Uh, but anyway, as you can see here, Bottas actually, his engine actually blows up. And literally, guys, if you haven't watched any of my career mode series from Series 2 or from Series 1, you will know that Bottas' engine always explodes. He is always the guy to retire from the Grand Prix. Moving on then further into lap 4 of the Grand Prix now. And uh, it's time for my pit stop. It's time for me to go into the pit and change for the softer compound tyres. Lewis Hamilton came in a lap earlier. So he's effectively going to go for an undercut on us as uh, he feels that that could be the case. Of course, we were only a second back. Uh, from Lewis Hamilton, but my pace was good. I was lapping in the 39s. My fastest lap, I believe, was a 139.2, and I was constantly lapping in the 139s, so I was very comfortable with my pace here around uh, Russia. Now we come off, as you can see there, a very nice pit stop from the team, actually, unlike China, where we lost out to Lewis Hamilton in the pit stops. Uh, but as you can see here, we're coming out of the pits. I think we're going to rejoin behind the manor of Rio Harianto. I believe that's where we uh, re uh, rejoin. But I want to know where Ricardo is. Because remember, Ricardo came in at the end of the first lap here. And there's Ricardo just behind. You can see him on the back end of your screens there. And uh, we get through. And uh, we are up. And I believe into 13th. And that's Ricardo there. So Ricardo's bold strategy that he did has not paid off. And we still maintain the lead. In fact... We've gained quite a little bit on Daniel Ricciardo. And hopefully now we can get past these back markers quicker than Ricciardo can. And that means that we can get on with our race and build ourselves a nice gap. Down the inside here, Rio Harianto, who gave us the space there. And uh, we get past him. And Ricciardo's stuck behind the Sauber with Lewis Hamilton behind. So Hamilton's undercut also didn't work. My pace on the super soft tyres was definitely so very, very... It was just really quick. And uh, I've managed to stay in front of the pair of them. So great job there. Uh, but as you can see now, we're closing up to the Sauber. I believe this is Marcus Ericsson now. So we definitely want to get past him again as quickly as we possibly can. Because, of course, the Red Bull of Ricardo, my teammate, and also Lewis Hamilton are behind the Sauber and also the Manor. So once they've cleared those, they've got a fresh fight against me. But as you can see, we're coming around this difficult corner. We're going to break very, very late on the Sauber. Down the inside. Nice move there. Nice and late breaking maneuver. And the Sauber did not put up much of a fight there. And uh, our attack can keep on going. We just need to keep carving our way through the field. We don't need trouble. We've now got Roman Grosjean in front of us. But he's on the super soft tyres. So expect him to come into the pits. Any there you go, actually. He's coming into the pits now. So we don't need to worry about uh, Roman Grosjean. But we've comfortably made our way through the field. And uh, we don't need to worry about any traffic. And in fact, we've gained quite a little bit on uh, the rest of the field. So that's pretty comfortable. And uh, that's lap six of the race done. Next up in front of us is Carlos Sainz, who is also on super soft tyres. But we expect him to come in at the end of this lap. And also Felipe Nazar behind me. And I believe my teammate Ricardo, Hamilton and Rosberg are all behind uh, this battle with Felipe Nazar. Moving on to lap seven of the Grand Prix now. And we're closing up to Felipe Massa in the, uh, in the uh, Williams with Daniel Ricciardo, who's now finally passed all the traffic. But we've got a nice, comfortable lead against them. So we're not too worried about them, actually. We're actually really comfortable in this Grand Prix. Breaking now down hard as we can here. We actually run quite wide, uh, trying to attack Felipe Massa here. And as you can see, we are now closing on onto Felipe Massa. And uh, I actually got told by my engineer that Massa had some sort of problem and was actually slow. So we got a very nice, comfortable and easy move there down the inside of Felipe Massa. No problems whatsoever. You can already see the advantage between me and Felipe getting much, much bigger. So whatever the problem is that Massa's having, it's definitely quite a big problem 
and uh, Williams definitely need to sort that out for him. Otherwise, Felipe is not going to be able to stay cool. He's just got to stay cool, Felipe. But moving on to lap 13 of the Grand Prix, nothing happened in this race. It was a completely dominant show from my Red Bull car once again. And a lot of people are going to probably going to say that they're getting that that, that this is not. Uh, fun anymore, but I just love this Red Bull car coming around the final corner. We win the first four races We have done a Rosberg-esque start to the season and we have got 100 out of 100 points here for Red Bull Racing A fantastic result for us today. Christian Horner is celebrating once again as he probably can't believe the amount of pace that we have got in this Red Bull car. Celebrating here, Foxy Dude is going to be claiming the top spot of the podium once again. Um, so that was kind of it. Nothing really happened in Russia, I'm not going to lie to you. I kept about a one second advantage to Lewis Hamilton on the super soft tyres. He tried to come in for the undercut, it didn't work at all. I was managing to stay in front of him. I got through the traffic coming out of the pits very, very quickly, which didn't lose me any time. And then from there on in really, I was able to keep my gap between me and Ricardo. For the rest of the race to be honest i was so comfortable around russia i mean it was a joyous time to drive really but there's the trophy there and uh, we celebrate with that and uh, we're going to be spraying that champagne once again as our title challenge is uh, pretty much perfect at the moment absolutely perfect um, and luckily my title rival lewis hamilton finishes down in fourth uh, for this grand prix i believe it was and you can see it there. So the two Red Bull in front of the two Mercedes, in front of the two Ferraris, in front of the two Force Indias. So a bit of a, uh, bit of a stacked order there as we look at the full classification. And uh, DNF there for Bottas and Pascal Verline, which is unfortunate. Um, but just to give you guys proof, I said I was racing on Ultimate AI and changing over. There it is. I'm not bullshitting. A lot of people will probably say uh, before they've watched the whole video, this is fake. But proof is right there. There is my human. Everyone I raced against was on Ultimate AI, proving that my win was 100% legitimate and I wasn't faking any of it. So if you guys want to conspiracize, no point, because I did it on Ultimate AI, I won on Ultimate AI, and I will now forever be sticking to Ultimate AI because I actually, I just love the Red Bull car. The chassis is so good. That I just love the Red Bull car. But anyway, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Drop a like if you did enjoy it. And subscribe if you are new to my channel. And hopefully, when we get to some tracks that are, again, more weaker for my car, we'll see a lot more action, of course, against Ultimate AI. Uh, but Russia, I just dominated rounds. But in the rivalry update here, we beat Lewis Hamilton by quite... Actually, I think we drew because he got quite a lot in the fastest lap section. But, excuse me, we do make an upgrade, which is the chassis weights. So we'll be having that upgraded for the Spanish Grand Prix but that's all for this uh, race and uh, yeah you'll see the upgrade now and I'll see you for the Spanish Grand Prix take care peace